with Stan Atkinson, Carol Bland, weather with Shelley Monahan, Walt Ray on sports, home of Dan Shively and Live Copter 3, and Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. Before we come back with that shotgun and fired at me four times. The man is a miss. I don't know how he missed it. A security guard relives a terrifying moment during this morning's hostage siege in a downtown Sacramento office building. And tonight, the gunman who staged the siege is dead. And those who live through it are counting their blessings. The deadly shootout is our top story on this Friday night. It began as a routine Friday for the more than 2,000 people who work in the State Board of Equalization building. The 18-story building is Sacramento's newest high-rise, located near 4th and N Streets. But the routine ended just about 10 a.m. when a gunman entered the lobby and began shooting. Channel 3's Tracy Bryan was on the scene within moments, and she brings us these details. He has exactly. lots of ammunition, and he said he had a couple guns, and he just wants what he wants. Just get over by that corner, they're out of the range. There's a suspect upstairs. A gunman now identified as 53-year-old James Holloway shot bullets and fear into what should have been a peaceful, rainy morning at the Board of Equalization. As evacuees ran for safety, the security guard who first encountered Holloway stood helplessly by, handcuffed. Handcuffs placed on him by Holloway just before the gunman shot up the lobby. Before we come back with that shotgun and fired at me four times. The man is a miss. I don't know how he missed, but I know he hit a few cameras in there and he blew the window out. And I managed to get out of there and took off. He blew the door away. And how he how he missed that uh, that security guard that got handcuffed, I'll never know. Because I think the, the, the glass took the absorbed the shot. And, and I just kept running as... I as evacuees going. ran for their lives, Holloway, a former CHP officer and alcohol beverage control board investigator, made his way to the 11th floor, where he reportedly fired another round and threatened the life of at least one worker before he headed for the 18th floor. He just looked like an average person, and he looked calm. That, that was the thing. He didn't look crazy or, uh, he didn't you know, say anything for didn't say anything. He said that he would not harm anybody as long as he got what he wanted which I have no idea what that is. In the end, Holloway took seven hostages, telling them he had tax problems he wanted fixed. Half an hour after his onslaught began, Holloway faced off against a SWAT team who had received permission to use deadly force. He turned to the officers, he told the officers he wasn't gonna be taken alive, and as he turned to one of the officers, uh, he uh, opened fire and killed him. About 17 rounds were fired in that final shootout, none by Holloway, who was killed by SWAT team members. And so the man who came looking for a solution to his tax problems ended up paying with his life. Tracy Bryan, Channel 3, reports. We are starting to learn a lot more about the gunman, 53-year-old James Holloway. We know that over the past 20 years, Holloway worked for several state agencies. We also know he lived in Manteca, that is in San Joaquin County, between Stockton and Modesto. Channel 3's Gary Gabriel is in front of Holloway's house in Manteca for us tonight. Gary, what else have you been able to find out about Holloway? Not much, Stan. This single-story home, as you mentioned, north of Manteca, used to be Jim Holloway's home before he was killed this morning. Tonight, investigators do know a bit more about the gunman. They say he lived here for at least two years. He lived here alone. His neighbors say he was quiet. But everyone tonight is still baffled about a motive for Holloway's one-man assault this morning on a state building in Sacramento. State police spent three hours searching through this home near Manteca for a motive into Friday morning siege in downtown Sacramento. They found none. What they did find, however, was a rifle and a box of paperwork, which investigators described only as Holloway's correspondence with various state agencies. They would not say what the correspondence was about. We wanted to uh, make entry and establish whether there was any uh, clues as to uh, why this occurred or uh, any evidence uh, that would be critical to the uh, case or investigation. So far, nothing has uh, surfaced. Uh, Neighbors describe Holloway as a quiet man with an alcohol problem. Surprised me. I mean, he was pretty quiet. I, I didn't know I had any guns over there or anything. So, uh, it really surprised me. He did have weapons. Yes, I've seen them. And you said earlier that he drank. 
Yes, we drink. Excessively? Well, let's put it this way. I uh, collect cans and bottles, and he used to give me his bottles. And uh, would you say uh, four gallons of wine a week, excessive? Investigators say Jim Holloway was very familiar with firearms. After a military service in the 60s, he joined the California Highway Patrol as a traffic officer. He left the CHP in 1970 and joined the state alcohol beverage control as an investigator. But in 1985, he left the ABC under protest. The exact reason for his dismissal has not been revealed. His assault on the State Board of Equalization was apparently tied to a long-running feud with the state of California. We understand the uh, suspect had some uh, documents in his possession that we believe that he was having some taxation problems and uh, had gone to the uh, Board of Equalization. Relatives of Holloway who drove from Stockton to help investigators had no comment about this morning's incident. State police believe Holloway's motive may be as much a mystery to them. And as we heard in Tracy's report a moment ago, Holloway did apparently tell his hostages shortly before he died that he was having tax problems. State investigators are hoping that the paperwork they pulled out of this house earlier tonight will help them find out what kind of tax problems he was suffering from. And apparently it was those problems that led to this morning's violent, deadly outburst in Sacramento. Back to you in Sacramento. Gary, there's been some earlier speculation that he might have gotten confused and gone to the wrong building. That in fact he wanted to go to the Franchise Tax Board. Has anything more been said about that tonight? No, we have heard nothing about that from relatives, from neighbors, and investigators have remained uh, uh, tight-lipped about that as well. Again, there's still uh, a great deal of mystery about exactly why he went to that particular building this morning and exactly what kind of tax problems he was suffering from. No one knows for sure. Mm -hmm. This incident, of course, raises many issues. Gary, thank you. In the meantime, in the wake of today's violence, state employees and their unions say they're concerned about security in state office buildings. This isn't the first time that state workers have been targets of angry citizens. Channel 3's Alice Scott explains more. In shock and upset and scared, and we still don't know how this happened with a secure building like this. The State Board of Equalization building security system was reduced to shattered glass by a gunman with a grudge against state workers. The non-bulletproof glass enclosure for the guard, cameras, monitors, and key cards for employees were no safety net. He walked in, displayed a weapon, and the security guard uh, left the scene. He has never had any security before. And now they've got all the security, and it didn't do any good. According to the director of the 2,300-person department, chairs and tables helped save the day. The, the uh, work areas are secure. The lobby has doors coming off it, and I had them secure the lobby doors on each floor. How? Secure, secure. With, with tables, chairs, and locks where you have them? Almost every state building is vulnerable to irate citizens. State worker Ruth Wyatt has had problems where she processes unemployment claims. Well, sometimes if they've got out of hand, we had to call the security. We had to call security or we had to call the police. People upset about their unemployment? About their unemployment or their health uh, benefits or whatever. The Union for State Workers is investigating this latest incident to see if security procedures should be improved. This is not the first time such an incident has happened. In the last few years, we have had incidents of this kind of thing happening, uh, violence in both uh, uh, an office building or in one of our state institutions. We had a state employee murdered, uh, and it is a deep concern that we've got to look into for uh, the future. In Sacramento, I'm Alice Scott, Channel 3 reports. Alice adds that while state employees are concerned about security, the number of state police officers is being cut back. There are 400 state officers statewide. 87 of them will receive layoff notices by June. The weather continues to play a major role in reason. That's when 53-year-old Jim Holloway shot his way past security and ended up on the 18th floor with eight hostages. Apparently, he was looking for someone to help him with his taxes. In less than an hour, police SWAT team members shot Holloway while he was holding a gun to a woman's head. It's still a little weird coming back to the building today. And Melissa Lewis was ushered off the sixth floor by police. Today, she came back for her car and her purse. What will it be like going back to work? Nervous, I think. Um, well, I'll certainly have a lot to talk about for the next couple of months, I'm sure. Up on the 18th floor, some of the carpet has already been replaced. The bullet holes are now being patched, and the glass that was shot out has been removed. 
Now, come Monday, it may look normal, but the Board of Equalization recognizes that some of their employees, especially those on the 18th floor, may not be showing up for work come Monday. We don't want to push anybody that would feel uncomfortable. It was a very traumatic experience. So if, if they feel uncomfortable coming in, just let their supervisors know beforehand, and uh, you know they can take the time off they need. For those showing up for work Monday, there will be counseling sessions at 10 o'clock in the morning and then again at 2. In the meantime, the security systems in place are now under review. Options being kicked around include arming the guards and installing bulletproof glass. And all of a sudden, in Sacramento, Jonathan Elias, KOVR 13 News. So the very sensitive work continues at the building there. In the meantime, there are more questions than answers about the gunman responsible for yesterday's siege. Pat Davis is in our San Joaquin Valley News Bureau for more on that. Pat, I understand people who knew Holloway describe him as polite and friendly, but they say he had a dark side too? Well, some people might say he was a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde, though most of the time Holloway did stay away from people, leading a very private life. And it seems his closest companion was a bottle of booze. Yet what's most shocking is the reaction of total strangers toward this rather mysterious man. I'd like to know why, why he did it. It's a question few of us can pass up. Why did this former highway patrolman turn into a heavily armed gunman? No one seems to know, not even Holloway's neighbors, who watched in stunned silence as tight-lipped relatives cleaned out his home near Manteca. Now that it happened, you know, it makes you wonder why he was so quiet and said to himself. It seems alcohol was a recurring problem for Holloway. In 1985, he left the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control after being reprimanded for alcohol abuse. And neighbors say he was often drunk. In the afternoon, you'd see him walk to the store and come back with a paper bag, and you knew it was alcohol. Yet the store clerks we talked to say they don't remember James Ray Holloway. In fact, they don't even recognize him from this picture. But the reclusive Holloway is now the talk of this town, and surprisingly, many people seem to sympathize with him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can identify with stress. Man's mind snapped. I don't think he intended to do it, but, you know, you get to a certain point where you're just a breaking point, and that's it. In fact, some people don't see Holloway as a bad guy after all. I feel sorry for him because he seemed like he was a lonely person. Is that because Holloway used to uphold the law, or is it because of our own pressures in life? For Holloway's neighbors, it's that question which haunts them most. You never know. It could be anybody. Maybe they could be your next door neighbor. You don't know. I think that's what most people find so disturbing about Holloway, that he seems so normal, so mellow, even polite, except maybe when he was drinking. And it seems he even did that in private. Bartenders we talked to say they'd never seen him before until he was shot and killed yesterday. Paul? Private man. Thanks, Pat. We have other news for you in the Central Valley town of Corcoran this morning. Tonight about the possible dangers of salmonella poisoning from a brand... These funnel clouds. Good evening. I'm Sharon Ito. And I'm Tom Curran. Those stories and much more straight ahead on Nightcast. Live. From Channel 31, Northern California's first primetime newscast, Tom Curran, Sharon Ito, Weather with Pat Evan, and Sports with Grant Napier. This is 31 News Nightcast. That's the corner of Fair Oaks and Fulton, 1955. It's back to the future for the valley, and it's flooding. But an extensive fix is underway to keep us from drowning in our past. Good evening. More on our water situation in a moment. But first for you tonight, we have a story of horror in a Sacramento high-rise. A Manteca man named Jim Ray Holloway storms an office building loaded with weapons before being shot by SWAT team members. He died later at the UC Davis Medical Center. The former CHP officer took seven hostages, apparently because he was upset over a tax dispute. But it seems he was in the wrong building. And 31 Steve Lyle has more on that. This is how it ended for Jim Ray Holloway. The SWAT team shooting to kill on the 18th floor of the Board of Equalization building downtown. He first arrived flashing a police badge at the security officer, but he was turned away. So he returned with three guns and 200 rounds of ammunition. I thought he was leaving. And all he did was go out in the van and pick up a couple of guns, and I guess he was going to shoot all the windows out if he had to to get in there. 
Brougham was handcuffed by Holloway before he was left alone. The gunman moving to an elevator and ending up on the 18th floor. Meanwhile, Shake and Board of Equalization employees were evacuating as quickly and as safely as possible. And this guy was absolutely like a, a psycho. Crazy. And we just moved in our building. But not everyone could leave. And I had all the people do the same thing on every floor. They barricaded the doors and locked the doors. Other witnesses say the gunman got off the elevator at the 18th floor, guns displayed prominently, and said he was looking for a man named Owen McCarty. The Board of Equalization says it has a retired employee named Oliver McCarty, but no knowledge of a connection. Holloway had a list of people he wanted to see. None of them worked for the Board of Equalization. Uh, he was asking them to bring certain people to him, and those people work at another agency, so... That the franchise tax, board, get franchise tax instead of State Board of Equalization. The officers determined that the situation was extremely dangerous. They requested permission to use deadly force. That clearance was given. Officers firing 17 shots you could hear from the street far below. You can actually see the smoke and the bullet holes that remain. Police say Holloway declared he had no intention of being taken alive. And he aimed a weapon at officers to drive the point home. Steve Lyle, 31 News, Nightcast. Again, none of the hostages in the ordeal was injured, but Sacramento fire officials say there are six different reports of stress-related problems, including women who went into premature labor. Now, we have much more ahead on this hostage ordeal in downtown Sacramento. Coming up, just what is Jim Ray Holloway's background? Well, 31 uncovered some shocking information on this alleged trigger man's past and his real motive behind today's bizarre hostage taking. Plus, we'll show you some scary scenes from the horrifying tragedy. Raw pictures as the crisis... ...stormed into the Board of Equalization building on Ann Street. Holloway was packing three guns, 200 rounds of ammunition, ready for war. He took a group of people hostage on the 18th floor. SWAT team members shot and killed the gunman after he pointed a gun at them. Holloway shouted he wouldn't be taken alive. The suspect fired no shots at our officers. All the rounds that were fired on the 18th floor were fired by our officers. We fired approximately 17 to 18 rounds. The hostages were not hurt and no building workers were wounded. Everyone getting out okay. Police say Holloway had a gripe about his taxes and may have gone to the wrong building. That's the only motive they have right now. Now, today's desperate action has everyone asking just who is Jim Ray Holloway. And tonight we're learning more about the man. Holloway is a retired police officer. He spent six years as a California highway patrolman. He left the division in 1972 for a position with the State Department of Alcohol and Beverage Control. He worked there until 1985. Holloway has a home in Stockton and has lived in Manteca. A little else is known of the man tonight. Now, to get a better perspective of the terror in that building, we're going to let you watch the drama as it unfolded without any narration. Here's a Raw News special report, a close look at an office worker's ultimate nightmare. And a duffel bag hanging out on both sides and a, and a shotgun. Uh -huh. And he just walked in and uh, hit the security door and it wouldn't open. And then he lifted up the shotgun and pointed it at the security cage. I thought that he was leaving peacefully. Then he decided to turn around, pull that gun on me there and uh, handcuff me. <clears throat> Told me he was going in the building with or without my permission. State police come up, and next thing I know, I see my co worker across the street running for his life. I go, oh My God, that's our co worker. I said, well, This is bad. This is not good. The police department responded. We sent a SWAT unit to the 18th floor. We were able to locate the suspect. He was found with a shotgun in his lap, a handgun in his hand. The officers determined that the situation was extremely dangerous. They requested permission to use deadly force. Clearance was given. They shot the suspect. He has been shot two to three times. He was wounded critically. We don't know his medical status at this point. He's been transferred to Sacramento Medical Center. Back, back, back. Ah. Gentlemen, Gentlemen, please. Thank you. Of 
course, all of this made even more terrifying by the fact that a lot of people in the Valley still remember so vividly the good guys hostage situation right. there. Those memories still very fresh, making today seem even more unreal. It's going to be tough going back to work on Monday for those folks. Absolutely. Right. But they will have to do just that. Mm -hmm. Well, in other news, that standoff in Texas is no closer to ending tonight. Frustrated federal agents say they're getting... Glass and stained carpet left behind by the gunman's rampage. This is where he... This is where he ended up, right here. And this carpet was uh, on Friday afternoon. I saw it. It was it was quite bloodstained, but it's it's been as you see, it's been completely replaced. This is how it looked after police captured uh, gunman Jim Ray Holloway. Broken glass, wrecked carpet, and in the hurry to get out of the building, a considerable amount of damage was done. The bill to clean and replace everything so far about ten thousand dollars. Well worth it if it helps erase deep emotional scars. Well, now on that recall notice out today. To ensure that will be the first day of work since last Friday's fatal hostage ordeal. A gunman took seven employees captive before a SWAT team shot and killed him. Today, the building's 18th floor, where the drama came to an end, shows no signs of the incident. Even damaged carpets and windows have now been replaced. One of the employees who encountered the suspect on the 18th floor told us today that the gunman had many, many potential victims. I'm just glad he didn't really want to kill anybody, because he sure would have had his choice of anybody. I think that maybe he could have probably shot 10 or 15 people had he wanted to. The state is supplying counseling sessions for employees who are nervous about going back to work tomorrow morning. The Sacramento Philharmonic put a social issue to music this weekend, offering a musical tribute to those who have died from AIDS. We'll go inside to see what the gunman saw as he terrorized state workers in a Sacramento high-rise. Where there's smoke, there's jail and arrest. Been allowed inside. It was on the 18th floor where gunman Jim Ray Holloway was killed by a SWAT team. News 10 has been working since Friday to gain access to the scene at 405 N Street. This afternoon, our Jaime Garza was allowed inside. He joins us now live. Jaime, are the offices ready for business as usual tomorrow? Uh, they definitely are, Elena. And when employees show up for work here tomorrow morning, they won't be able to see any signs of Friday's violent hostage situation. Take a look at some video that we have here. It is uh, taken looking through uh, the window that just a couple of days ago uh, had several bullet holes in it. You can see there that is looking to the west. It's been replaced along with the blood-soiled carpet where Holloway was shot to death. Now, the glass security cage the gunman blew out as he forced his way into the building has also been repaired. And the only damage left, and you have to look closely to see it, is a small surveillance monitor apparently broken during the gunfire. Now, fixing the physical damage may just be a lot easier than fixing the psychological ones. I'm sure there will be people apprehensive, especially, especially the people that were on the 18th floor and were close to it. I mean, it'll probably take a while to get over that. So we're trying to offer as, as many services as we can and try to make them feel as comfortable as they can. Our counselors will be available all week long to help employees cope with Friday's tragedy. And tonight at News 10 at 11 o'clock, we will hear from one of the hostages who surprisingly says she feels sorry for what happened to Holloway. Mr. Holloway is a human being who is sick, who happened to come into the wrong place at the wrong time. And he did not want to hurt us. He wanted to die. And he just happened to pick us. To, and chose us, you know, so he could die there. More of Delgado's exclusive interview tonight on News 10 at 11. Back to you in the studio. That is an interesting perspective. Yeah, it certainly is. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you. Other news now, and state health officials are warning... Cameras were allowed in the building today to see repairs made to glass windows and carpeting on the 18th floor after the police SWAT team shot and killed the 53-year-old gunman. Carpet has been uh, completely replaced. And... Um, as there was several, you know, remnants of, of bullet holes and were bullets that skipped along the ceiling, nicked on the sides. That's all been, that's all been replaced and filled in. And um, somebody walking in here, I'm sure, wouldn't even be able to tell that anything happened here Friday. The total cost for the incident is around $10,000. Officials say counseling will also be available for employees who wish to talk about the incident between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. tomorrow. Folsom prison officials are... I think people are getting a false uh, sense of uh, security uh, by seeing a guard in full uniform in the basement and not knowing he, he's not trained in a CPR first aid or he's not even armed. Uh, I think they're wasting their money. 
The state is providing counseling sessions for employees who are nervous about going back to work in the morning. Don't be surprised if when you... Each other's fear, they return back to work. All trying to forget the vivid memories of Friday's high-rise siege. Good evening, everyone. More on that story for you in a moment. But first, the perilous times are back for McClellan Air Force hostage before being fatally shot by SWAT team members. 31's Juliet Goodrich talked with employees today to find out how they're coping with the ordeal. Yeah, well, I couldn't. I normally have to be here at 6.30. Returning to work today for Dennis Kelly, not an easy task. He was one of the more than half dozen State Board of Equalization employees held at gunpoint Friday on the 18th floor. It, I get a real funny feeling even now when the elevator's open. Uh, but I, again to myself, just like a few minutes ago, I went down to the 18th floor again because I figure eventually I'm going to have to get back. And getting back into the swing of things may take quite some time. Friday's chaos, still a very vivid memory in many minds. I felt a little claustrophobic. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go back up there and feel like I can't get back out again. And it's scenes like this that aren't easy to forget. For some, coming to work today is rekindling those moments of terror. I was in the elevator this morning with, with three women that were getting off at the 18th floor. They were all crying. So, you know, it, it's a traumatic experience, but there's a, uh, the, the feeling is, is a lot different than, than really I thought. It seems like people want to be here. They want to be able to talk about it to their fellow employees. Counseling services were being offered to hundreds of employees today to help them cope with Friday's traumatic event. For some, that's the only reason why they came to work today. Some people Mike Checky, one of the counselors, the says they'll be encouraging employees to talk openly about their fears. Some people have uh, nightmares. Um, there may be physical symptoms like nausea, that sort of thing. He says they'll be offering counseling sessions for as long as needed. In Sacramento, Juliet Goodrich, 31 News, Nightcast. And coming up tonight on Nightcast 930, we'll take a close look at the security in our state buildings and what's being done to improve it. A scary scene. Well, it was an uneasy first day back to work for State Board of Equalization employees, some of whom spent an hour of terror in the hostage situation. That's why many workers sought out the help of counselors today. Fox 40's Deborah Steele has more. The first day back to work for hundreds of the thousands of State Board of Equalization employees was not an easy one today. Everything started rerunning itself, and I just really got real nervous and upset. So to help those employees cope, the state is offering crisis counseling sessions. I think people, you know, want to share with their fellow employees what happened, uh, talk about it, uh, but they do have fears, they do have apprehensions about going back in. There weren't really any board representatives there for us to express our concerns as far as the lack of security. So far, the crisis counseling sessions have been standing room only. So state officials say they may extend the program so that all employees wishing to attend will have the opportunity to do so. But despite the state's efforts, some employees say that counseling isn't enough. I already knew it's okay for me to feel the way I'm feeling. Nobody can tell me my feelings are wrong. Everyone's going to handle it different. In Sacramento, Deborah Steele, Fox 40 News. A wild stolen car chase tonight. Equalization building. Workers struggle to cope with the after effects of a gunman's hostage siege. But as Channel 3's Tracy Bryan tells us, counselors were on hand today to help them make it through a rough day. I'm just real upset. Tense. <laughs> it is in our office. Nobody's really working. You look at everybody that comes in now. And just a little noise will make you jump. Monday morning, harder to face than ever for state equalization employees returning to work. Friday's violent scenes haunt most everyone stepping into the lobby. Violence sparked when 53-year-old James Holloway, carrying four guns, blasted his way into the building and took hostages. Dennis Kelly was one of those who looked into Holloway's eyes and can't forget the gun staring back. Uh, every time I see an elevator open or whatever now, it's like, like I cringe and it's like even when I walked out of my office this morning to go warm up my coffee in the microwave, it was like I was really kind of real leery and, and I'm jumpy. You know, it's like, you know that, you know, I don't think anything is going to happen at all today, but yet at the same time, you don't know. Hundreds of workers attended two counseling sessions provided by the mental health department. Because I'm not sleeping, um, I don't want to be here. 
it's real scary to be here. Main thing I want to get out of it is just to be, be reassured that this ain't going to happen again, you know, and that's my main concern. Security is also a concern of the state employees union, representing 100,000 state workers. Now, this is a glaring example of what happens when you contract out state services jobs once done by state employees, such as the state police, and you contract out to private security firms. We've been concerned about this for years, that uh, it's dangerous working in these state buildings. Some employees are calling for bulletproof glass in the lobby security cage. Holloway's bullet shattered the cage on Friday. Others want armed guards. The Board of Equalization's executive director says he'll review those requests, but he's not making any promises on changes. I've been told by the police there's no system that can control somebody who doesn't care if they live or not. In Sacramento, Tracy Bryan, Channel 3 reports. Tracy also notes that employees moved into that new building just six weeks ago. At the time, they were assured that the security system was brand new and, in fact, state-of-the-art. Workers there, as well as the union, are calling for more improvements in the system. Cult members hold up in the branch division. We learned that many employees are still recovering from the brief reign of terror. It was a terrifying experience. March 26, 1993. We could have all died. A gunman enters the board of equalization building in downtown Sacramento. Still going through some therapy. It's been eight months since James Holloway stormed into the state building at 450 North Street, terrorizing hundreds of workers. He held them at bay until he was overcome and killed by Sacramento police. We were decorating the other day for Halloween, and we were putting things up, and we saw one of the boreholes and one of the light fixtures that could not be repaired. So that brought the incident back. Chris Salgado was on the 18th floor when Holloway stepped off the elevator. Today, she says she still doesn't feel safe on the job. I haven't felt safe since when I came back. Chris says she is worried about security in the building. But state officials say the building is one of the safest around. There's been a state police report that's come out, and they've offered several recommendations of things that we could do. Um, that hasn't, they weren't anything real major. It was like security cameras positioned in different places, uh, card key locks, and maybe some new places we can do that, um, timers. Deborah Parker was the employee who called 911 last March the 26th. And I got underneath my desk, and then I got back out, and then I grabbed the phone, and I took the phone underneath with me after I did 9911, and then took the receiver under there with me. That one hour of terror continues to weigh heavy on some employees at the Board of Equalization. I used to tell my son I loved him at least once a day. I tell my son I love him all the time. The State Board of Equalization employees were offered counseling again after the shooting spree at a law firm in San Francisco over the past summer. Eight people died during that shooting spree. The firm of Pettit and Martin refused to talk with us for the update. But they say that something everyone is trying desperately at this point to forget is the incident that happened at their uh, place of business. Right. How long-reaching that.